The only noticeable real effect of the moon on the Earth are the tides. Tides <sighs> exist because while Earth pulls on the moon, the moon's gravity pulls back on the Earth. <laughs> Just massacre those birds. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> that was kind of comical. So, um, can you imagine being forced to have the frame so close to your face? That would be like terrible camera work. Almost as bad as what I did last weekend. Because uh, I uh, went ahead and watched a bad movie. Like, I suppose you guys may also like bad movies. I indulge in them. There is just something very cathartic about just a plot that makes zero sense and you try to figure out what went through the mind of the people who did them and it's just the best. The thing about it is that I've learned from a wonderful proverb uh, that I heard some time ago that of kill not that within you which is cringe but kill the part that cringes and those are words to live by and through that i went ahead and watched yet another disaster movie called moonfall and it was absolutely bonkers which is why today i'll be checking out a channel that i haven't checked in a while called curse Cassad on what would happen if the moon well hit the earth today we are answering an age-old, very scientific and important question. Very scientific. What if the moon crashes into Earth? It's more interesting and weird than you probably think. Yeah. Let's start with the basics. Why isn't the moon on its way to crash into us already? Is this like based on the simple caveat of the velocity versus gravity balance that are between the moon and the earth because technically speaking you can argue that the moon is always falling towards the earth but because it's going so fast and the angular momentum is maintaining all of it it'll never crash but if it were to for some reason be imbued with the speed force because that's how the speed force work it's basically the same way that the green lantern energies work right i mean come on if the lanterns can have a planet and a well, a starfish as a part of the crew, then what stops the Flash family to also have one? Ah, oh, don't tell me. But of course, on the other hand, if it were to be slow, then it would fall and hit us. We know that Earth's gravity pulls everything towards it, including the moon, but somehow it stays up, as if suspended by some opposite force. But there is no other force countering gravity. Nope. Instead, the trick to staying up is a sideways motion that we call an orbit. You see orbits every day. When you throw a ball, it makes a tiny little orbit. The only difference between the ball's orbit and the moon's is that the ball eventually hits the ground. Yep. Basically, the reason is speed. If you could throw your ball fast enough, it would bend around the world and come back to you. If there were no air slowing it down, it could orbit forever. And Just as a little point of correction before, I did use the term velocity and not speed because velocity is more like, it's a vector, so with a direction, whereas speed is a scalar. And this is what the moon does, falling sideways around Earth very fast with no air slowing it down, orbiting Earth every 27 days at 3,600 kilometers an hour. Yep. So, for the moon to just stop in its orbit and plummet to the Earth would break more laws of physics than we have time to explain. So, how do we crash it into Earth? In a nutshell, to change an object's orbit, you need to change its speed, yeah. which changes where gravity takes it. But even small changes require enormous forces, which is why all the large objects in the solar system are so stable nowadays. According to science, the moon is big and very massive. Even igniting billions of rocket engines all over its surface would barely move the moon. Calls back to the Wandering Earth, that one Chinese movie. Um, quite, it's a quite good one, just, just as a recommendation to watch. Of course, the science are kind of weird. But yeah, nothing but magic will change something like that or a cataclysmic event within our galaxy. It looks like nothing short of magic will make the moon fall, so we'll use a magic spell that slows down the moon so much that it changes its orbit and oh. spirals towards Earth. Okay. To get the most from the experience, the moon will take exactly one year before it hits Earth. That's fast. Ready? Three, two, one. Magic. Month one. 
For the first few days, nothing really changes. The moon gets a tiny bit brighter and scientists get confused, but the rest of us don't notice anything different. The only noticeable real effect of the moon on the Earth are the tides. Tides exist because while Earth pulls on the moon, the moon's gravity pulls back on the Earth. Just massacre those birds. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> that was kind of comical. Since the strength of gravity gets weaker with distance, different parts of the Earth feel a slightly different pull, which causes the Earth, especially the oceans, to bulge when the moon is above them and contract a little on the sides when it's not. Yep, an ellipsoid. As Earth rotates every day underneath the moon, the moon's influence fluctuates, causing the water level of the oceans to rise and fall by about half a meter twice a day. But with the moon drawing ever closer, high tide gets higher every day. Mm -hmm. At first barely noticeable, within a month the moon has covered half the distance to the Earth and ocean tides have grown to four meters. Every day high tide comes and waves flood coastal cities. And there's no end in sight. With the moon drawing ever closer, tides rise ever higher, inundating another city and more inhabited land with salty water every day. I am a huge fan of water. Wow. Really? As long as I don't dive too deep into it, that's where like a certain feeling of claustrophobia comes up, which is weird because the ocean is vast and you're pretty secured when you're diving. But either ways, um, I recall a friend of mine who was visiting in Thailand, uh, visiting family, and he happened to have been there during the time of the, the tsunami. That was said back in 2011. And um, I saw all the images down there. And since that day, I, I got scared. I got scared of high waves. That stuff is freaky. Month two. By the end of month two, the moon has covered two thirds of the distance to Earth, and global infrastructure is crumbling as tides rise above. An Avengers level threat. Displacing up to a billion people who happen to live near the coastlines. As ports <sighs> become inoperable, shipping grinds to a halt. Not only will it slow down the delivery of Kurzgesagt products, but also less exciting things like food. Global communications fall into disarray. 95% of the internet is carried by ocean crossing cables, and while these largely don't mind the water, their terminals on land do. Oh yeah. Living inland doesn't guarantee safety either. Tidal bores cause rivers to flow backwards, carrying salt water to contaminate surface and groundwater supplies. Agriculture will be done. Gas shortages follow as all refineries near the coast are abandoned. Countries are left with the supplies they had on their shelves, and strict rationing will begin. In the cities, chaos reigns during the scavenging hours of low tide, while survivors take refuge in high rises when the water returns. Month Pretzels three. are very important, huh? Three months in, and the moon is close enough to disrupt communication and navigation satellites. While it's normally far too distant for its gravity to cause any major problems for our satellites, the closer it gets, the more warped their orbits become. Oh yeah. As their fuel for orbital corrections runs out, satellites careen out of control. Months four and five. On Earth, the tides are rapidly growing to about 30 meters and will be reaching 100 meters in height in a few short weeks. At low tide, the ocean recedes hundreds of kilometers, exposing the continental shelf like vast deserts, while at high tide, walls of water drown agriculture, houses, and skyscrapers. And now, almost five months in, the yeah, apocalypse has finished high. its warm up act. Since the oceans are on average only three kilometers deep, the tides have reached their maximum. Up until now, the water in the oceans could flow, absorbing most of the moon's gravitational squeezing, but now the Earth itself is really feeling the squeeze of the ever-approaching moon. Conspiracy theorists putting on the tinfoil head going, see, what did I tell you, the Earth ain't round, it's more like an irregular ellipsoid. Yeah. You are surprisingly right, because yes, the Earth is a lot wider in the equator, and also because of the tidal shift all the time, it keeps on changing its shape regularly. And I, I suppose the same thing will also apply to the Moon in this case, right? Because the gravitational pull of the Earth also affects it, which is like six times higher, so it's bound to also be like egg-shaped by the end of this. These aren't so much tides of water, but tides of rock. 
The squeezing of the planet combined with the weight of quintillions of tons of water sloshing on and off the tectonic plate creates enormous stresses below and begins to cause earthquakes of increasing magnitude and intensity. I wish I could have animated something like this in university. Earthquakes might be or where they occur, but like a child jumping on their bed until it breaks, no good can come of it. Strong. So I'm going to be a bit of a cynical one here and say that if the unfortunate situation happens that uh, the infrastructure of the internet is still operable at that time, you can bet your ass that somebody will be doing some equilibrium stance on this wall of China and post it on TikTok by that time. This is by far the most realistic. <laughs> okay, I'm being mean. I'm being mean, but it's sad, but it's kind of true. Strong tidal forces lead to volcanism on other planets and moons. On Earth, squeezing the planet disrupts the magma reservoirs inside the crust, triggering sizable climate-altering eruptions in Chile, New Zealand, Yellowstone, and elsewhere. The Philippines. Meanwhile, watching patiently above is the moon, still no bigger in the sky than a small cloud. Within 75,000 kilometers of Earth, it is bright enough to illuminate the night sky like twilight. Months six and seven. Mm. After half a year, the moon is entering the space once occupied by geosynchronous satellites where it orbits Earth every 24 hours. It appears to float at one spot in the sky, unmoving, cycling through a full set of phases every day, but only visible to half the planet. With the moon stationary above the Earth, the tides seem to freeze in place. Half the world flooded, half with its water seemingly returned to the sea, as if Earth is holding its breath to prepare for the worst. Yeah. As the moon sinks further, you might wonder if its gravity would overpower Earth's, pulling you up and ending your misery. No, it's too strong. Fortunately not. The Earth's surface gravity is about six times stronger than the moon's, so even if the moon were hovering right on top of you, you would still stay on the ground. On the moon, things are different, though. The near side of the moon is more strongly affected by Earth's gravity, so during the next few months, it starts to stretch forward towards the Earth into yeah. something of an egg, triggering yep. deep moonquakes as the lunar rock flexes and changes shape. The lunar football. Though barely noticeable now, this squish will grow to hundreds of kilometers in a matter of months. <laughs> months 8 to 11. At this point, the apocalypse has arrived, and we can summarize the months before the crash as everybody left has a really bad time. The day after tomorrow. The tides sweeping over the Earth slow down and then reverse their direction because the moon now orbits Earth faster than it rotates. Look at the that. planet will experience an abundance of earthquakes and volcanism. Massive amounts of volcanic aerosols rise high into the stratosphere, causing global cooling. To reflect sunlight back into space. What little light gets through is rust red and is periodically diminished by daily eclipses. The result is a rapid global cooling with acid rains and summer snows killing even the hardiest plants. Oh man, think about that. How insane that would be. I mean, this is one of the few cases that some sci-fi movies always get right. The global cooling part. Because we've had that a lot of time. I think the most recent one, okay, the, the Iceland volcano doesn't really count. That, that was a brief period. But there was the uh, Penoturba one, the one in the Philippines. I, I'm barely remembering its name, but older than that, because that one was in the 1990s, older than that was the Krakatoa. That one is stuck in my head because I, I watched a documentary on that on repeat because that was so frightening to me literally blew like 70 percent of an island just the eruption alone but yes the aerosols are going to be blocking the sunlight and causing this global cooling and it's going to take a lot of time for the planet to recover from this especially when it's happening globally all of these volcanoes going ahead in one go and possibly also triggering an ice age and as far as I remember, those do last like hundreds of thousands of years, right? The, the latest one, depending on what period you want to check from, if it's two and a half million years ago to a uh, hundred thousand years till 11,700 years ago. Yeah, that would be the correct date. Wow, how the fuck did I remember that? Anyways, um, that's kind of like the period it takes. For a nice age to be over. Like, if we were to compare that to the two other planets that are uh, candidate for terraforming, 
Mars is still cold, there hasn't been enough in its atmosphere yet, but Venus, for one, had needed like hundreds of thousands of years to heat up because it's kind of in a similar scenario. So yeah, <laughs> this situation royally sucks. The clock runs out on civilization. Billions have perished while an X-shaped moon is still drawing closer. Let's get ready for the grand finale. Month 12. Finally, at the end of the year, the moon has reached the Roche limit. That's yeah. the point where Earth's gravitational pull on the moon is stronger than the moon's own gravity. Things on the lunar surface start falling towards Earth, and by the time it crosses 10,000 kilometers, the entire moon disintegrates into rubble, smearing itself into a massive ring system around the Earth. Yeah. Fortunately, the moon's disintegration means the misery on Earth has ended. No moon means the general apocalyptic nature of things Reverse. comes to a halt. The oceans recede, flowing off the land one last time. Any survivors are treated to a view of tremendous arches spanning the sky, glimmering in the sunlight, illuminating the night sky more brilliantly than any full moon ever could, while meteor showers of moon dust fill the sky. It's hard to say what happens next, but the tranquility may be short-lived. If too much moon dust rains down, friction heats the atmosphere, mm -hmm. possibly boiling the oceans. If not, the enormous shadows cast by the rings, combined with all the volcanic and meteoric aerosols, oh, block even is... more sunlight, and a period of runaway cooling could begin that freezes much of Earth's surface solid. In any case, at some point, people will emerge again, from submarines or bunkers or mountaintops. They will not have a great time before rebuilding civilization, and their success is not guaranteed, but at least they'll be trying to do so with beautiful rings in the sky. <laughs> Saturn! <laughs> so how do you calculate that sort of thing? Well, you just need a bit of insanity and some maths. If you need to brush up on the latter, our friends from Brilliant are the perfect coaches to turn your curiosity into nice a Nice transition to an ad. Brilliant is a problem-solving website and app that makes science accessible with a hands-on approach. I did try Brilliant for a little bit for drawing and also uh, computer science because I, I did go through a course of data camp, but for some reason I had forgotten my password and it became like a hassle to try and recover that. So I, I did Brilliant instead. It, it was like kind of comparable, so yeah, it's, it's fine. This way you learn something almost without you noticing it. And tiny step by step, you'll build up your long-term understanding Giga of science brain. and get closer to your STEM goals. To start looking at the world of science from a different perspective, go to brilliant.org slash nutshell and sign up for free. And there's an extra perk for Kurzgesagt viewers. The first 200 people to use the link get 20% off their annual membership, which unlocks all of Brilliant's courses in maths, science and computer science. At Kurzgesagt, we love to create things that seem impossible at first. Brilliant can help you acquire the skills to do that. I overall do like this approach because the, I suppose, scenario that many would have expected was if the moon like straight up crashed into the earth, that would have killed us all. But as Kurzgesagt tends to do, they always have a hopeful side of things, right? Even when they're talking about climate change or whatever would it be. It's, uh, it's very nice. I like this. But guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. Hopefully you got some good information out of this. And of course, as always, please do go and subscribe to Curse Curse Art and like the video if you liked it. And wish you all to have a wonderful day. See you guys in the next one. Bye.